Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Design with Ruzbe. Continuing with CSWA practice problems, today we'll work on question 1.6. Let's take a look at this question. So in this question, as you can see, unit of measurement is millimeter gram second. So when we start working in a SOLIDWORKS environment, we need to ensure that we are using a correct unit of measurement. Now, looking at this drawing, we have a 3D model here. We have the right view, front view, and the top view. My preference is to start with the base of this geometry. As you can see, we have a rectangle, a box-shaped thing. So I want to start with that one. And then after that, I want to focus on a second part of the geometry, which is this portion. So let's go to SOLIDWORKS and start modeling this part. In SOLIDWORKS, as I mentioned, first thing is checking the unit of measurement. So here you can see we have millimeter gram second, which is a correct unit of measurement. Now. To start with the 2D geometry, I'm going to click on sketch and then I choose sketch. And here I'm choosing front plane. Now here, in order to make a rectangle, I'm going to choose the rectangle option here from the sketch tab. And here is our rectangle. Now we can dimension this part. The top line must be 60 millimeter. And the height of this box should be 30 millimeter. We also have two holes in this geometry. So I click on circle command and then I'm going to make two circles here, one and two. The size of each circle must be eight millimeter. That's the diameter of each circle. So I'm going to click on the smart dimension and then click on each circle and then choose eight millimeter for the diameter of the circle. Now, we have to define a distance of the circles from each line that we have in the geometry to fully constrain them. First of all, we know the geometry is symmetric. That means we should have the same distance between the center of each circle and the center of geometry because the overall distance between the circles is 40 millimeter. Then we can make a conclusion that the distance between the circle and the center of geometry should be 20 millimeter, which is actually 40 millimeter divided by 2. I'm going to do the same thing here. 20 millimeter, that's a distance. We also know that geometry is symmetric in other direction as well. So these circles must be always in line with the center of the geometry. To define this constraint, I'm going to click on the center of the circle, hold control, and click on the center of geometry. You can see now I have some options here which are basically same as the option on the left side. You can use whichever you want. I'm going to use this horizontal option. Okay, now you can see the circle is black which means it's fully defined. I'm going to repeat this for the other circle. I click on the center of the circle, hold control and click on the center of geometry. This time I'm going to choose horizontal from this ribbon. Okay, good. So now we have circles fully defined. Okay, the next step is adding fillet to a geometry. You have two different choices. One is adding a fillet in a 3D model. The other one is adding a fillet to the 2D sketch. I'm going to use a fillet on a 2D sketch. To do this, I click on a sketch and then choose fillet. And then here, I'm going to set the radius to 8 millimeter. And now, let's try adding fillet to each line. To do this, simply click on a line and then you can see the preview of the fillet. And now that I have the fillet, I'm going to click on OK. OK, so that's the final geometry or 2D sketch for the base of the geometry. Now we have this 2D sketch fully defined. It's time to use extruded boss feature to extrude it. To do this, First of all, click OK and then go to Feature tab and here we have Extruded Bus Feature. We click on it and here for the thickness, I'm going to choose 5 mm thickness. OK, great. Now we have the base of the geometry. It's time to focus on a second part of the geometry. Uh, and to do this, I'm going to focus on a different plane. If you remember, we started with a front plane. Now it's time to switch to a different plane. 
to make a 2D sketch. To do this, click on a sketch, click on a sketch, and here we have to choose a surface or a plane. In order to choose a plane, I'm going to choose this model tree, and here we have right plane. So let's select that. And now right plane is active. Whatever you draw will be placed on the right plane. So to start modeling, I'm going to use this line option. And here I make a line. Looking at the question, we know that the angle between this line and a horizontal line should be 15 degree. In order to define that angle, I'm going to use center line just to help me with uh, making this a sketch. And I plot this horizontal line. And then I'm going to click on dimension, click this line, click on horizontal line, and you can see that the angle dimension is active. Click on it and then put 15 millimeter. Now we know that this line will be connected to the arc or a circle. So let's make a circle. To do this, go to a sketch, click on circle command, and then here I'm going to have a circle. We know that the line must be tangent to the circle according to the model. So I click on a circle, I click on a line, and again from the options on the left side, I'm going to choose tangent. Okay, that's good. Now for the diameter of this circle, we can click on a smart dimension, choose the circle, and then we can define 25 millimeter, which is diameter of the circle. We also know that the distance between the center of the circle and the back surface, back line of the base, must be 40 millimeters. So I'm going to choose 40 millimeter here. Okay, that's good. Everything is black, everything is fully defined. Now let's add another circle to the center of this part. So I'm going to click here and another circle. And this circle has a diameter of 8 millimeter. Okay. Good. Okay, next step is to add two lines in a bottom section here. So I'm going to click on line command, and this is one line, and the second line is going from here to here, something like this. Now, here we know that the blue line, this line, and the circle must be tangent, so I'm going to choose tangent constraint. Okay, so we are good here. Last step is to add an arc here. So looking at the geometry, we need a kind of arc shape here, which connects the bottom line to the top line. So let's click on the arc command from the sketch, and I'm going to click on the center of the geometry and click here and make this arc. Okay, you, you may ask, how do you know that the center of the arc is the same as center of the circles? The answer is somehow shown in the question. Looking at this question, you can see that we have a plus sign here. That plus sign is somehow showing center of the circle or arc. And because we only have one plus sign, that means that this location is center of both circles and also this arc. And that's how we can conclude where the location of center of arc is. Now, for the arc, we know that the radius is defined to be 14 millimeters. So I'm going to click on a smart dimension, click on the arc, and then here I'm going to choose 14 millimeter. Okay, good. And the last step, we need to fillet in this corner and this corner. The radius for the fillet is 2 millimeters. So to do this, I click on a sketch and I click on fillet. And here I'm going to choose 2 millimeters for the radius. First, I choose this line and then this line. And you can see the preview with yellow color. Click OK and we're good here. Now, the other line, this one, and the top line. This time we're going to get a kind of warning message. Basically, SolidWorks says that if you do this, part of the line will be deleted. It's OK. Continue with making this change, and we can redraw that line. So I click on OK, 
and here it is. So now as you can see we miss this line. So I'm going to click on the line and then draw it again. But one important thing here is that as you can see the line is blue it means it's not fully defined because we kind of miss the tangent relationship here. So I click on this line, hold control, click on the circle and again from this option that I have I'm going to choose tangent. Now you see everything is kind of black. Okay, the only issue I see so far is this line. This line is shown with blue color which shows the line is not fully defined. Let's take a look at the question again and see if we can find any sort of hint or clue to fix this problem. Looking at the geometry, we use this distance 40, we use the fillet radius, we use every single dimensions on a right view and we also use every single dimensions in a front view and top view. So literally I, I don't see any sort of relationship that we missed or any sort of dimensions. And to be honest with you, I, I'm thinking that a question is missing an important point here. Um, we are missing important piece of information which won't allow us to have a fully defined geometry. Okay, this is my opinion. If, if you think, uh, if you have a solution or you, you think I'm missing something, please let me know in a comment. But if I'm an exam and I came to this conclusion that the question is not fully defined or I don't have all the information I need, I'll try to uh, make some sort of reasonable assumption. Now the question is what sort of assumption we can make here to make our geometry fully defined. One thing that I can think of is the relationship between the bottom line, you see this line and the top line. To me when I'm looking at the top line and a bottom line it seems like these lines are kind of parallel. So what if we apply this constraint and then check the final answer and see if it works or not. So let's do that. So going back to SOLIDWORKS, I select this blue line, hold control and I'm going to select the top line. And from the options I have, I'm going to choose parallel. Okay. Now by selecting parallel, we can see that the geometry is fully defined, which is good. The only issue is that we don't have a fully closed contour. As you can see, the top line here and this bottom point, they're not connected. So, so let's connect them with a simple line command. So I click on the line command, I click on the top point and connect it to the bottom point. Okay, good. Now we have fully defined 2D sketch with closed contour. It's time to use extruded box feature and make the final model. To do this, I'm going to click on feature tab and I choose extruded bus. And here SOLIDWORKS asks us to choose a contour. First, I'm going to go with the 9mm overall thickness for all of these contours. So I click on contour 1, 2 and 3. As you can see, because I have a meat plane option selected here, the extrusion is kind of symmetric and that's actually what we want because if we had like a blind option you can see it's not going to be symmetric it's going just in one direction so make sure you have meat plane selected and then change the thickness to 9 millimeter and then click OK nice now we have the 9 millimeter thickness extruded feature we wanted let's click on extruded bus again go to model 3 choose extruded bus and activate previous sketch. This time I'm gonna only choose the first plane and I'm gonna use 18 millimeter thickness for that. So I'm gonna choose this one and then 18 millimeter. Okay awesome. So as you can see now we have our final geometry. Everything looks okay. At least it's similar to the image that we saw in a question. Now it's time to check if it is actually correct or not. To do this, let's check the total volume. The total volume is provided in a main question. As you can see, um, the total volume of the geometry is expected to be 24,032 cubic millimeter. Let's check this number in SOLIDWORKS and see if it got the same answer or not. So to do this, 
I'm going to click on Evaluate tab and go to Mass Properties. And here in the Mass Properties, you can see the volume. Total volume is 24,032 cubic millimeters. This is showing us that the final answer that we have here is correct. And also, the assumption that we had that those two lines were parallel was also correct. Again, I believe this is a miss in a question. But with a proper assumption, with looking at the question, we were able to find the correct answer. Okay, I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any feedback or comment, please leave a comment down below, especially about the topic we discussed, about the assumption that we made. Thanks again for watching. My name is Ruzbe. Hope to see you again soon in the next videos.